Happy New Year. This is Marianne coming to you from seems to be so .com. It is 2016 and this is my first tutorial for the year. I first want to again congratulate Electric Quilt for 25 years of providing quilters with a lot of happiness. Thousands and thousands of quilters use Electric Quilt and are extremely happy with the software. They enjoy it. They enjoy its features. It's really wonderful software and the support is fabulous. I had to use the support myself over the weekend and they answered me immediately on Monday. So I was very happy that I was able to get my questions answered, figured out what the problem was and move on. And I can honestly say it's working for me. So I want to again congratulate Electric Quilt for 25 years of just great support and service and a great product. As part of my tribute for the year, I'm going to try and offer a tutorial once each month on some of Electric Quilt's great features. This month, I'm going to feature my tutorial on printing layouts in the software. If you're an applique quilter, such as myself, a layout is a necessary part of your supplies. It's a must have. You cannot lay out your pattern just willy nilly and hope it all works out. You need to have some kind of a layout, especially when you're doing something like my block of the month, which is this year, Sunbonnet Sue and Sam travel the world. There are many parts to this, these patterns. They're, you know, dolls, Sunbonnet Sue and Sam, you know, um, it's not your traditional Sun Bonnet Sue and Sam, but it's a fun play on them. And as you can see, even in the China doll, she has lots of lots of little parts. And so knowing where they're going to go is extremely important. And that's what a layout does for you as an applique quilter. So having a layout, whether you use it, whether you print it on paper, or if you use a cutting machine to print it on stabilizer or freezer paper, or whatever you use for your medium, allows you to lay your shapes into place and get them all into perspective. You can glue them, some people glue them on right to, like some people will print to their freezer paper or their stabilizer and then glue the shapes onto that and then sew it onto their background. Other people, such as a machine embroiderer, has the opportunity to have the placement put in place for them with stitches. Then they iron their shapes in place. And you wouldn't necessarily need a layout unless you're trying to get it in a certain spot in your fabric. And then you would use a layout to help you get that lined up in your machine so it stitches out properly. So that, these are the reasons why we use layouts as applique quilters. When you print a layout in Electric Quilt, you need to have your pattern on the quilt block work table. And you need to know the sizes that you're going to print your pattern in. Now, when I make my patterns, I don't usually just make one size. I tend to make several sizes because I think quilters are of all types. If you're a beginner, you might want to start with a larger pattern. If you're an expert, you may want to do your sunbonnet shoes in a smaller pattern. So that's the reason why I try to make my patterns in various sizes. And I try to accommodate that when I do. So um, I try to cover as small as I think it should be done and as large, well, you could really go as large as you wanted, but I can't see doing a 50 inch size of this sunbonnet shoe. So no, I didn't make 50 inch sizes. But if someone wanted a custom size, I'd be happy to do it for them. Either or, we need to know our sizes. And then we're going to put in our, we're going to click on our printing icon, which we can do here, or we can go to file and print. When we print layouts, we always use the block line in the menu. And here it is the same. Now, I print to PDF by default. Nothing goes to my printer 
without it being a PDF file first. And so if you have your default printer set up as your printer, you may want to change it to a PDF if you have software installed on your desktop that allows you to do this. There is many free softwares on the web. I have uh, a list of them on my own blog that you can install that will create a PDF for you. And they what they do is when you go to your print setup, they will show up on your menu here as options to print to PDF. As you can see, I have several softwares that will do it for me. I have a software that will even print to image. Now the reason why I will encourage you not to use the image writer for layouts is because an image, while it will give you the proper size and everything that you need, you may have to do some editing to your document and it's not as easy to do that with an image as it is to do it in a PDF editor. So I would recommend that if you don't have a PDF editor that you consider looking for the free tools for editing PDFs or purchase PDF editor which is from the makers of PDF Bill as well which is a $20 software. It's very cheap for most most PDF editors cost over $100. It's not an easy software to use, but it you can literally do every p feature in PDF editor that I can do in my more expensive software. I bought mine because it's easier to use. And that's the only, and that's really pretty much the only reason. And because I love Foxit software. So anyway, we are we want to change our printer to the PDF printer. If you want to leave your default printer as your printer, go ahead and do that. But you will want to change it to a PDF printer if you have that ability. If you just say, "Oh, to heck with it," I you know I don't I'm not worried about it. Big deal. Don't worry about it. You can still follow this layout, but I think you'll see the reasons why you would want to go to PDF if you have the ability to do so. So we're now ready to print. Let's have a look. I'm going to go and choose 12 by 12. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, let's just stick with the 9 for now. This is a 9 inch pattern or a 9 inch square block that I have set it to. And as you can see, it's going to print two sheets for me. But it's put a little bit of a curve here and a curve here. Do I really want, to, especially when the whole pattern shows here anyway, do I really want to have the second page? It will print that second page whether I want it or not. So, no, I don't. And, I, and if I were printing directly to my printer, I would not be happy that I wasted that. So I'm going to show you a little trick that you can do. The one thing you want to remember with printing blocks especially in electric quilts or when you're printing any kind of pattern is that you're not printing to to get the center okay you when once you print out your pattern you're then going to make the center so you want to keep that in mind for the longest time I didn't have that in my head I always thought that the pattern I was printing out for some reason that the center on, on cross grains that it was giving me that I put together with the paper were the center of my project and then one day it hit me that wait a minute no it's not <laughs> you know? that's why I was never lining it up properly because it wasn't proper so I mean how dumb can I be so I want to reiterate that to you that when you're making this pattern you're not making the center of the pattern you're just making the layout. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to go to the applique tab. We want to click inside. It's going to automatically send us to our Bazaar Curve tool. I, I wish it would take me here, but you know, whatever. I select all by pressing my control and my A on my keyboard. But if I didn't have that ability, I could come up here to edit 
and select all and do the same thing. And then I want to take and I want to put my presser, my, my clicker, my mouse point over the little crosshairs in the middle or the center. And I'm just going to slightly move my Eskimo over to the left side. And this is going to allow me to print this so that it's all on one piece of paper. Can you see here? Now, it would still print this, but I've got it all on here. And I don't have to worry about putting two pieces of paper together. So when I print this document, I'm now going to get a 9x9 nine nine layout. This is how I label all my stuff. This is Sue. And as you can see, it's going to pop up open in my my um, software and it's going to show me that I have two pages. I'm going to delete one of those pages because I don't need this page. There's no reason for me to keep it. And I would then, I would take and put this back to the width. I would make sure my all is taken and I would remove this. I would remove this line. Anything that my printer is going to print. I would remove this even and I am ready to print. And this is when I would take and I could come to my printer and then I could tell my printer print it to this. And that's, is, I mean, that's just the way, you don't even have to save it, for instance. You can just print right away. It will print this as it is and you're ready to go. Now, if you're using a cutting machine, you would just take your saved PDF into your cutting software and pretty much it's just import it in, save it, I always save, and then um, go to your cutting because that's literally how quick it is to create the SVG file. Or if you're in Silhouette and you do it with Silhouette, putting PDFs means you have to trace. So I would take mine in and make it SVG first, whether I do it in Inkscape or not, or if I do it in Make the Cut or, or Sure Cuts a lot. I would always make that SVG first, then I would bring it into Silhouette, and then once it's in Silhouette, you literally just go straight to cut, and that's it, and you're ready to go. That's how quick it is. Now, if I have a much larger pattern, like a 12 by 12 pattern is much larger, I'm just quickly going to go over this. As you can see, we already have made this move, and we would have had to make this move with the 12 by 12 pattern. But I'm going to show you another trick that's pretty cool. So I'm going to change this to 12 and 12. And as you can see, no matter what, I'm going to have those four pages. Or I just don't, I, I, I just have a problem with this. It's just not in me to want to waste paper like that. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go to page setup. I'm going to change this to landscape. Do you see how the paper changed here? This is portrait, this is landscape. And we're going to try a landscape look and see what it will do with that. Oh my gosh, look how different that is. I still have these two blank sheets, but as you can know, as you know, we can delete them out of the PDF. And then it just we just have these two pages again. We can remove this, we can remove this, and we are set to go. Print away. And then we only have these two pieces to go. Now if we had a cutter and we were doing it on our cutter, we could actually put the two pieces together because this is only a 12 inch block. It's gonna fit on your 12 by 12 mat. And you could put your two pieces together and then just print out the whole thing. That's what I do when I, <laughs> that's why I print all my layouts on my cutting machine. I mean, wow, it's just amazing. And it goes together very quickly when you do this kind of thing. So that's why I love the cutting machine for printing out. I'm not going to tell you to go buy a cutting machine just so you can do your printouts, but I'm going to encourage you the next time you replace your printer, you might want to think about those cutting machines if most of your stuff is for, your printing is for applique because I don't use my printer anymore whatsoever for applique. I only use my cutting machine. So those are the little tips and tricks I have for you today. 
I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I already know what my subject is for February. So I will be seeing you next month. Bye bye for now. Have a great month.